All right, Romans 6, 7, and 8. As if I'm going to get through it all. We'll see. In Romans 6, verses 1 to 13, Paul is outlining, should we continue in sin? And this is just a basic concept. It's like, okay, we, we're Christians now. Should we continue in sin? And the obvious answer is, God forbid, no. We, nobody wants to. We don't want to. No, I don't want to sin. And then he gives the first reason why. The first reason Paul lays out why is because we're dead to sin. We are dead to sin. We've been crucified with Christ. Jesus died bearing sin in his body on the cross. And he has condemned sin in the flesh. He, he, he has put away sin. Sin has been dealt with. His blood has paid for sin. Sin has been sin has been handled. So should we continue in sin? That's the first reason why. No. Jesus already he already did the work of spilling his blood to pay for sin and dying bearing our sins in his body on the cross. Sin has been dealt with. Reason number 1. Should we continue in sin? No. How shall we continue to live in sin when we have died to sin too? We have been buried in the likeness of his death. Buried in baptism. Through his cross, we've been brought into his death. So that we are now dead as dead can be to sin. The blood has paid the price, and also we've been brought into death from death to sin. Reason number one. That's just reason number one that he lays out. Then he goes into Shall we continue in sin? Should we continue in sin? And the reason the reason number two is we're no longer under law, but grace. So the first time he says, you know, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? And that is that, that is what happened. I mean, grace is super grace, super abundant, hyper grace. It already covers all sin. That is what he did. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid it. No. How can we continue to live in sin when we died to it? Jesus has paid the price for sin, and he's put, sin, he's put us to death from sin. Okay? You got to keep going. I know. It's like the mind wants to reject it. You got to keep going. Okay? So... He, he keeps pushing. He keeps pushing because now he goes to, you're no longer under the law, but you're under grace. So should we continue to sin because we're not under the law? God forbid that too. And, the, and, and number two, the reason number two is you are a servant of whoever you yield to. So should we yield ourselves to sin? He said, no, look at the fruit. Look at, are you, are, aren't you ashamed? Oh, look at what the, the, look at what your members, was that fruit? Didn't that, didn't that, wasn't that shameful? The fruit of sin is shameful. Should we just, because we're not under law, should we just continue? And say, no, we know it's shameful. We don't want to continue. <laughs> okay, now. I understand the mind can do all kinds of tricks and the devil wants to keep us spinning in circles so we don't come to our senses with this yes definitely so sin yes it, sin can be pleasurable for a season 
there's plenty of different things that can go on in your mind and where your flesh and the so the first reason we should not continue in sin is we're dead to it the second reason is we are not servants of that we have we are dead to it and we are now raised in newness of life and we are servants of that commandment that we received unto holiness that form of doctrine which is the good news the good news the power of God unto salvation the gospel Jesus died for my sins he's completely killed it he brought sin to an end he finished the work he paid the price mission complete so I'm not I should not yield my members as a servant to sin Okay, Paul, we're on the same page. I, <laughs> okay, yes, I agree. Should not yield, because he says, whoever you yield yourself to, that's, that's who you are a servant of, to obey. Whether of sin unto death, or of righteousness unto holiness, right? And the righteousness is the righteousness that has been imputed to me by faith in the gospel. It is, it is hearing that form of doctrine that, which we obeyed from the heart. We believe the gospel. It is that again. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting excited because there's just so much coming out of this chapter for me right now. So we, we've obeyed that commandment, that form of commandment. It is the gospel. We've obeyed it from the heart. We believed it. So, we're no longer servants to sin. Now, we are servants to obey the hearing of faith. That is it. So, we yield ourselves to righteousness by hearing the gospel and believing it. As opposed to sin which results in death okay so the law the law is good the law is good the law is not the, the law is holy and just and um, and good it is a good thing. But I cannot see to the end of the law to find life. All I do when I look to the end of the law, I find death. So, he says, is the law... Is the law something good made death to me? No. No. It's me that can't see to the end of the law. I can't follow and see to the end of it to produce life. The law is good. It prevents death, but I can't see to the end of it to produce life. I can't do it because the strength of sin is the law. It is like a megaphone of... It is the megaphone of sin. Sin is a motion within my members. The way that Paul describes it is he uses the same word that he talks about like the household or the house. Sin is present. While I will to do good, sin is present with me. It's like a roommate. It's just there. It's in the house. It's in this tabernacle. It's there. Sin is present. It's like a bad roommate. <laughs> it's no longer I, but sin is working in me to produce all kinds of sinful stuff. And it's using the law as a megaphone to point me to an answer with the flesh. So, what is the solution? 
he says, Praise be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This little sentence is such a funny sentence to put in the middle of this whole discourse because so far what I'm seeing is just a bunch of ideas that end up how do I do it how do I do it what do I do I can't I can't okay I I'm dead to sin okay the law is just the uh, is just a megaphone for sin okay so if I focus on the law sin becomes exceedingly sinful I can't see to the end I can't see life at the end of the law what do I need to see praise be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord through 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 what is the through we were brought into death to sin it is this it is this concept that is it is recognizing what he did as true that is where freedom is is in reckoning what he has done in bringing me into death death to the law and death to sin Take it position. Take it positional. Take it positional. See it and recognize it. Jesus has brought me into death. And ignore. Ignore. Do not yield yourself to sin. Sin. And you know what? And this is it. This is this is where it's it's tricky because we know the law is good. But sin uses, sin uses the law as a megaphone to get you to yield. Sin is bad. Okay, we go by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and bad. Sin is bad. The law is good. Doing, not doing stuff is good. Not doing bad stuff is good. And doing bad stuff is bad. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But I have to do this. So, what sin does is sin magnify sin the flesh is taken advantage of because sin, the motions of sin in our members magnify are magnified by the law and we do not yield ourselves to sin and we are dead to the law so this entire realm of of even what Paul says that which so he what he wills to do his will he wills to do good but To accomplish it that he cannot find that it's not present with him it's not present with him instead he finds something else present with him a roommate sin present with him it's not even him anymore it's not even his will his wills hijacked by sin taking advantage of the commandment showing him more sin and this is epitomized in do not covet he uses it so beautifully. I mean, the Holy Spirit, it is so, so direct. Do not covet. And this is after the context of a different husband, right? He's talking about the law is an old husband. And if you die, if the woman, if the woman's married and has a husband and she and the husband dies she's no longer bound to the law of her husband she is free to marry another we in the same way have died to the law and we are free to be married to Christ now 
we should not covet the old husband to please and to yield ourselves to obey. I want to do what's right. But is, isn't that coveting another husband? Amazing. Amazing. To, my mind serves the law of God, but my flesh serves sin. It's an old husband. I desire to serve. I desire to keep the law. You got to be dead to that. And praise be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has completely killed us. And so we should not yield ourselves to the want to fulfill commandments to abstain or to obtain the law's good of course it's good but there's another principle there's a roommate there's a nasty roommate and if you take the law as your landlord <laughs> you're getting evicted <laughs> I don't know if that example even works but the idea is you cannot submit yourself to the law you cannot yield yourself your flesh will not submit it's your flesh will not obey the law. And even your will will get hijacked by the motions of sin working in your members if you choose to look at the law. Instead, we praise God through Jesus Christ and we recognize our death. Our death. And this is even a death to and we must we must see the law as an old husband and not covet to to yield ourselves to it to obey as a servant but instead to yield ourselves to that commandment that we received which has brought us into a death to all the old and a newness of life, a new way, a new and living way in Christ, which is not, is not, is not in carnal ordin ordinances. The fruit and the members are still there, but sin, we've died to it. The law, we've died to it. And death, he died once. He died once. Death has no dominion over him. So, sin and the, and, the, and the motion working in our members, using the law, we reckon ourselves dead to that realm and instead alive to God through Jesus Christ and through his accomplished work bringing us into death. I had this idea that when I did this video, I wanted to draw a whole bunch of diagrams because and and because I was just seeing these pictures of, of, of you know, my, my mind and my will, if I look to the law, I'm brought into death by the motion of sin, which comes alongside straight into death but through Jesus Christ who starts over here and comes to me with that holy commandment which we have received that obedience from the heart which is the it's just the gospel it's just believing the God it's the obedience of faith it's the obedience of faith 
The gospel comes to me. I receive it. I recognize my death with Christ. I recognize new life in Christ. And I'm dead to the law. This whole other realm of carnal ordinances and sin working in my members, it's rendered dead. I don't even yield to it. And so when sin is present with me, I recognize it as it's dead. I look at Christ. I look at Christ. I look at Jesus Christ and I receive I receive that that word. That gospel, that good news, that truth, that identification truth, that that positional truth of being dead with him and raised dead to sin, dead to the law. And I don't yield. I don't yield to that. It's got to... The temptation's always there. Temptation is always there trying to work. And sin is is there. And we are in a fallen body. We're in a body that is... I mean, it's it's rendered dead. It's it's the flesh. So sin's there, but the Spirit of God comes to us before before sin. You know, before all of that, before the law, before the and gives us the good news. Preaching the gospel to yourself. But also recognizing that yielding to sin is letting sin lord over you. And I'll use the roommate example. Sin is a roommate in this body that I live in. Sin's here. It's, it's present with me, right? Paul says oikos, which or he says oik, oiko, I think, oiko, which just means it's in the house. It's a roommate, right? Sin's in the room. It's just the nature, this nature that we have from, from Adam. And sin, what sin does is in order to beat us and get us to try and clean the room sin points us to the land to a landlord which is not even our landlord which is the law the landlord said this the landlord said this but we recognize i don't even live here i don't even live here <laughs> I don't even live here anymore. You can't tell me. You can't lord over me. You can't point me to the landlord. You can't point me to... And that's what sin does. Sin accuse, Sin brings about, through accusation, through the commandment, through temptation, through the motions, so that we would yield and submit ourselves really to the landlord, the law landlord which is not even a landlord because we don't live there anymore. We're dead. We're, that person that used to live in that house is dead. I don't live there. I am seated in heavenly places. I am living in a new and living way, a new realm. I'm alive to God. I don't live in that. You don't get to tell me to go talk to the landlord. I am alive in Jesus Christ. And so even though uh, I'm walking around in that same old, this same body, my life is hid with God 
in Christ. And I don't have to submit myself. Not to sin, not to the landlord. I don't. Now, does that... I don't submit myself to the landlord. I, I don't let sin point me to the landlord. That's what sin does. The landlord's not bad. The law is not bad. Runs a tight ship. So tight that if you... He'll kill you on the spot. You can't survive it. But do I listen to sin, point me to the landlord to work me up and do and and bring about all these different corruptions? That's where I have to the only answer is I am dead. I don't live here anymore. I do I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to this entire apartment complex. I'm dead to it. I it's what and that is not yielding yourself as a servant to sin. That is that's what it is. Not yielding yourself, not letting sin rule over you and tell you what to do. Which sin always points you to sin wants to point you to the law. And it uses the motions in your members, which it's present with you. And if you will to do that which your your members, you can't find the end, it's by the law. The only way out is death. Recognizing death. And not looking for a result or a nice, a, a prettied up apartment complex or favor with the landlord. Or a good relationship with the landlord. Or progress with the landlord. Nope. Dead to it. My life is hid with Christ. My life is hid with God in Christ. I don't live here anymore. <laughs> Boy, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.